Tulsi Gabbard. Gabbard's strengths and her weaknesses were actually sort of two sides of the same coin because she had some really good moments and some really good opportunities there, but she never milked them for their full value. She didn't really respect the, the weight and the value of what she had. It was like she was serving you filet mignon, but with a side of ketchup. Uh, she, so most importantly, her strength is that she's a veteran. She was in active duty in Iraq. Um, so her examples on those issues were knowledge-based. They were incredibly respect-worthy and respectable, but they were kind of hard to connect with because of how she delivered them. Um, and she really needed to be able to tell those examples as stories. And she just didn't milk that. Uh, she completely avoided the question about equal pay. Again, don't avoid a question. Uh, instead, she just talked about her military history deployment in Iraq and keeping America safe. Good messages, not relevant to the question. Drives me nuts. Um, her verbal breakout moment, and she had a couple of them. The primary one was where she cleanly shot down Tim Ryan twice. First, with regard to his comment about American engagement in foreign wars and how he would respond to veterans, uh, saying that to her, as a soldier having served in active duty in the Middle East, that his answer was absolutely unacceptable. She just laid him out right then and there, and his reaction was clearly uncomfortable and looked away and whatever else, which showed he knew she won. Um, but then he tried to defend himself and made it worse because he then referenced the Taliban and 9-11, and she jumped right back in and said, it wasn't the Taliban who flew planes into our buildings on 9-11, that was Al-Qaeda. And she just, once again, very matter-of-factly stated it and kind of popped his balloon right then and there. Um, but I think she could have really uh, milked that a little bit more in a graceful way, but otherwise putting a nail in his coffin if she had said something like, Congressman, Respectfully, if you don't know the difference between the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, you're clearly not ready to lead our troops or our country as commander-in-chief. I mean, to me, that would have been like, okay, he's done. Move along. Next. Um, the challenge, of course, is that she's got these great pieces, but her delivery is flat. She needs some of Warren's fire. She's just too blasé in all of her delivery. She has no expressions on her face. Her voice barely modulates. Uh, it's like listening to a mannequin with a soundtrack. And um, that, that just loses all the color, all the fire. You know, if you're not fired up about your own experiences, how are you going to be fired up about defending me, my rights, and giving me as a citizen all the opportunities that you claim that I deserve? Uh, I think she also missed the opportunity to milk the question about uh, changing her vote with regard to gay marriage. And, you know, she originally was uh, more conservative and had voted against it. And in the last six years, she did clarify that she since then has been pro-gay rights. Um, you know, she, she explained reasonably, I thought, that, you know, she'd had a socially conservative upbringing and through experience and getting to know more people, especially through serving with LGBTQ service members in the military um, and how they give their lives for each other uh, meaning the those service members and her mutually, uh, you know, it was again just sort of stated, and it lost the chance to really um, use this as a role model moment where she could say uh, something to emphasize her own personal growth and how this is something that we all should be striving to. Uh, that that is, does anybody really still have all the same views that they had when they were ten? or 20, you know, if you haven't grown at all since then, that's a problem. So she should highlight this as a positive. Um, and even if she were to say something like, you know, you can't always walk a mile in someone's shoes, but you can walk a mile with them side by side. And we, meaning her and her service members, her co um, colleagues, we walked miles together in combat boots in the desert. They'd give their life for me and I'd give my life for them. I mean, that's just so much more powerful to, to show her new sense of unity uh, and, and collaboration through personal experience and personal growth. Um, I just think she could have done a whole lot more with that. And then in her closing, once again, she just kind of went generic. She mentioned that the government was created of the people for the people, but not if it's of or for the rich and powerful. Um, you know, referenced 
healthcare, clean water, good jobs. Frankly, everything that she said was exactly the same as what everybody else stands for up there. There was nothing unique, nothing memorable, nothing interesting. Um, and once again, overall, her delivery from start to finish was just sort of one note. And uh, I guarantee that Trump is going to latch onto that if he has the opportunity and use that to come up with whatever her nickname is that he's going to use to dismiss her as not a viable candidate uh, and not even a competitor for that matter, someone who doesn't have what it takes.